Should you be scared of artificial intelligence? And is it really as powerful as we kind of all believe it is? My name is Antonia Sankey, and today we dive right into the science and its consequences for the media industry. Joining me is Stuart Russell, professor for computer science at the University of California, Berkeley, and a renowned expert when it comes to the history, present, and the future of AI. So, Mr. Russell, let's shed some light on this technology, okay? How do you define AI, for starters, especially for media and for journalism usage? So, AI refers to... Uh really the task of making machines intelligent. It isn't one technology uh, any more than physics is one technology. Um, and uh, what making machines intelligent has meant uh, since the beginning really is making machines that uh, to the extent possible are rational, meaning that they take actions uh, that can be expected to achieve their objectives. So it might be a self-driving car. You know, is it going to succeed in taking you to the airport? It might be a spam filter. You know, is it going to make the correct decisions about what's a re real email and what's a spam and so on? There's many different kinds of algorithms, many different approaches. More recently, we've been using a lot of machine learning to create these capabilities, but there are lots of other ways of doing it as well. Climate change, COVID-19, wars around the globe. There are so many things to be scared of today. And uh, yet you also want us to be scared of AI. Why is that? So what I, I what I want people to be scared of um, is the possibility that if we don't do it right, we will lose control over AI systems as they become more and more powerful. Um, eventually, one has to expect that uh, they will be more capable than human beings of making decisions in the real world, uh, not imminently, but I think eventually. Um, and in some sense, that makes them more powerful than us. Uh, so then the trick is going to be, how do we retain power over something that's more powerful than us uh, and do that forever? Um, so one could be a little bit scared about that in the same way that it's reasonable to be scared about a nuclear power station, which could have a containment failure. We do our best to make sure that never, ever happens. Um, but sometimes, as happened in Chernobyl, it does happen. Uh, and so it's reasonable to be scared, and, and that fear should make us take extra precautions uh, and really insist that we understand the technology and that uh, we can have guarantees that uh, we remain in control. So how can we ensure that artificial intelligence actually benefits humans and society? Do you have any concrete tips on that? Uh, I think so. I think I can, uh, I can point us in a, a positive direction. It helps to understand why things go wrong, right? Um, for example, Alan Turing, who was the founder of computer science, uh, predicted that... Um, he said, once the machine thinking method had started, it would not take long to outstrip our feeble powers. And uh, eventually we should have to expect the machines to take control. So he really didn't see any solution to this problem. But when you look at how things go wrong, how is it that making AI better and better makes things worse and worse, right? That can only happen if what the AI is trying to do, the objective that it's pursuing is actually misaligned with what human beings really want. And um, unfortunately, as we've known for thousands of years, you know, with the leg legend of King Midas or the Sorcerer's Apprentice or all sorts of other stories, uh, it's really hard to specify your objectives completely and correctly. And I think, you know, uh, in the area of media, Uh, this is a very serious problem already. Uh, the algorithms that operate on social media called recommender systems or content selection algorithms, they have more control over human cognitive intake than any dictator in history. They control what billions of people spend hours and hours every day reading and watching. And so would you actually say that, sorry, would you say that AI then is currently 
actually transforming the media industry as a whole? Could we say uh, it like that? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, we used to think of, uh, you know, editors as being the people who decided what stories get into the daily newspaper. Um, but now it's algorithms. And um, those algorithms are pursuing an objective, which is maybe click through or engagement, right? Some metric of how well the algorithm is doing at getting you to click on things or to watch things. And uh, one might think, okay, well, an algorithm that's learning to, uh, to improve the rate of clicking is going to have to send you things that you're interested in. Um, but that's false in several ways, right? One is it'll send you things that you think you're interested in. We call that clickbait, right? So it has some basically deceptive title or uh, may even have deceptive content to, to make it seem more interesting to you. Um, but the other thing that happens is the, the algorithms can get a higher success rate by actually, in some sense, brainwashing you. They, they send you a whole chain of content that changes you into a different person who is more susceptible uh, to whatever content they have available to send you. Um, and so that's mathematically the best solution for maximizing click-through or maximizing engagement. Uh, so not sending you what you want, but actually changing you into somebody else. Uh, so manipulating people. Uh, and that's a simple example, because these are very, very, very simple algorithms. They don't even know that human beings exist. Uh, and yet, because they interact with each person in a customized way hundreds of times every day, and every one of those interactions is a little nudge in a particular direction, um, that can have a massive effect. You know, just, just as a little tiny trickle of water can produce a huge canyon uh, over uh, a long enough time, these algorithms have actually moved entire countries uh, in, the, in arguably the wrong direction by essentially separating people uh, into more and more extreme camps. But can AI stop people also from believing fake news? Is there also a positive potential of AI technologies in the use of media and especially uh, social media? I believe there is. Um, already AI systems are used to flag uh, disinformation of various types. Um, and then, you know, usually there'll be a human inspector who checks before removing a post. Um, but uh, the volume of disinformation is so huge that using AI for that purpose is, is helpful. And obviously, as I, as I already mentioned, spam filtering uh, is an early example of trying to clean up the information flow uh, in the world. And that's actually been uh, reasonably effective. I would say up to now, the problems with disinformation have not been significantly reduced uh, by the use of AI. Uh, it's too difficult right now for AI systems to ascertain truth. Um, they can say, well, this article looks more like that one or looks more like this one, but they can't quite understand the real content of the claims in the article and say, well, I happen to know that that's not true. So this in, this, in the way that a human being could do. Um, in terms of the general problem on social media, uh, which is not just disinformation, but uh, this, this sort of uh, extremizing effect, it, we are working now with some of the social, social media companies to try to understand the phenomenon in greater detail. Up to now, it's been very difficult for researchers to gain any access uh, to the data and the algorithms and the actual Uh, events that are occurring, uh, you know, trillions of times a week. When you look at all the interactions across all the users, uh, it's trillions of things happening every week. Um, so understanding that, uh, even at a macro scale, um, is extremely important, but extremely difficult when you don't have any access. So that, I think, is beginning to change. And I think some of the social media platforms are understanding not only do they have a responsibility, but also they have a real problem um, that they themselves don't understand how their algorithms are having the effects that they appear to be having, if that's indeed what's going on. Um, and 
the, so first, the first thing is access. The second thing is, okay, well, if click through or engagement is the wrong objective, what's the right objective? Uh, and this is an extremely difficult problem. It's, all, it's almost one of the most difficult problems because it, it, it becomes almost philosophical. Um, so let me give you an example, right? Uh, when, you, when you buy, when you look, go to a bookshop and you, you take books off the shelf and you look on the back, it says, you know, this novel was so great, I couldn't put it down, right? Well, does that mean it's manipulating you and so we shouldn't be allowed to sell uh, novels that are so interesting you can't put them down? Well, that, that's, that's not typically how we do things. Um, so uh, coming up with a definition of what manipulation is uh, that doesn't rule out, you know, it doesn't prevent people from writing stuff that's interesting or, you know, and, and we expect to be changed, right? We expect to learn from reading the newspaper and, and become a different, we hope, better person from that learning. Uh, so in some sense you might say that well that's manipulation or you might just say that's education or you know a process of learning so where is the dividing line is extremely hard to say um but i think one one thing would be um to think more about uh the objectives and purposes of the person right? the per you know my objective is not click through right that's not what I want. I don't. I don't want my life to be made up of clicking lots of times. Uh, you know, I have very different objectives. So, so thinking more about what are the actual objectives of of users, and those are very varied uh, and different. And so, the system should know actually that it's trying to be beneficial to the user, but it knows that it doesn't know exactly what the user wants. And I think coming back to the question of uh, control. You know, is there a solution? I think this is the solution, in fact, to to not build systems that pursue a fixed objective, but actually to build systems that know that they don't know what it is that we humans really want the future to be like. Um, and that uh, that actually creates, um, you know, from a common sense point of view, a kind of humility in the algorithm. Right? It says, well, because I'm supposed to be helping people, but I don't know what they want, you know, sometimes I'm going to have to ask permission because uh, my plan may affect the world in ways that I'm not sure that humans really want, so I should ask permission. Um, and ultimately, they will even allow themselves to be turned off because they they don't want to be doing whatever it is that the human would cause the humans to turn them off. Um, so you get very different kinds of behavior from systems that are designed this way. And I think this is the core of how we should think about designing AI systems going forward. So understanding the why and the how is key and uh, being afraid a little bit is not only okay, but also a good thing when it comes to artificial intelligence. And Mr. Russell, I at least have come a lot closer to understanding artificial intelligence and the question that arise from these technologies. Um, for the future and especially in the media industry. So thank you so much for your insights, Mr. Stuart Russell. Thank you very much indeed. And thank you all to our listeners and viewers for tuning in. What is your take on AI usage in journalism? Which experiences have you made? Please let us know in the comments and stay healthy wherever you are. Until next time, goodbye.